Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight I am uh, using Atom to create a Spring application in, and um, it actually was actually because I got a little bit annoyed with uh, with IntelliJ. It, it became uh, it was very very slow in some of the releases, uh, especially if you're using WSL. So then I said, okay, how difficult can it be? Just give me Atom, which is uh, one of the uh, yeah, best, best one of the best lightweight uh, IDEs out there. It is, it is cool for editing a lot of uh, scripts and a lot of languages because there are packages for most of those. How difficult is that? And um, this is uh, my experience right here. First of all, you have to download the Atom, of course. So you have to you have to go to atom.io to download Atom. And of course, if you, when you're not using Intel here to create your Spring project, then you need to go to start.spring.io. Here you can uh, here you can pick your uh, your modules like Spring Web, Lombok, uh, Spring Boot Dev Tools. You need the Dev Tools because um, you want uh, if, if you want uh, your application to restart every time you uh, make a change. Then of course you want the the Dev Tools. That's the same if you are using IntelliJ, by the way. Um, and then you press uh, Generate, and then you get a nice zip file, and then you can unzip that somewhere. I'm using WSL, which also compli complicates things a little bit more. I'm using Gradle, I'm using Java, and latest and greatest, and Java 16. And then I went, so, my, so the first thing I did after, the, the, after un, unpacking the, the zip file was to go to I started up Atom, and I opened up the project folder by pressing File, and then Open Folder. And then, there's, then there was some uh, some plugins that I need uh, per default if, uh, in, in, in order for this uh, just to be a, a bearable, kind of bearable. And that is, um, if you press File in uh, and then Settings, and you can find your packages under Install, and you write Install. There's something called lang uh, Language Java that needs to be installed, that needs to be enabled, or else you will not get the colors, uh, the, the 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 colors in your Java files, and you need that. Um, I tried a lot of the other uh, packages. I will just tell you that in in, in two minutes. But uh, you you want one that's called autosave. So every time um, every time your atom loses focus, then it will uh, then it will actually like save the file, so you don't have to press Control S all the time. So that's one. Then, because you, if you're using WSL, uh, then you do not want you, uh, you do not want Atom to actually move your files to the trash can when you try to delete the file. So that means that then you need to have the delete, the permanent delete. It's named something with permanent delete. Um, delete permanently. So yeah, per permanent delete. You need this plugin also because then um, th then you could just delete the file by pressing uh, Shift. Uh, delete instead of just pressing uh, delete. That was the second one. Then you need something called file icons, um, and you need this anyway. If you're also if you're uh, if you're creating a web application, then you will need file uh, icons. And there, this is the one right here. You can see it's, it has been downloaded nine million times right there. You need that so you get the nice icons on each file in the, in the left side. Um, uh, then there, there are some um, there are some plugins regarding Spring Boot. Do not fall into that trap. That is a waste of time. They are not being maintained anymore. The last uh, the last Spring Boot uh, update for this was in 2019. So don't try. Okay, you can try it if you want to. Then let me know if you have any su success with it. You can also see it has a very low amount of, um, of of downloads. Spring has their own STS IDE, which is based on Eclipse, which of course they are spending their energy supporting instead. But in this situation right here, I just wanted something that was really, really lightweight. I wanted to use Atom because it is, I really like Atom, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, then there are some, there are actually some Java plugins, then they all suck. So that's just how it is. Um, the, some of the Java plugins could actually help with uh, can help with uh, imports, but only if it's uh, only if it's classes that you have in your project, which of course is not good. Um, so actually, I ended up uh, uninstalling or disabling uh, all of the Java plugins. If you have any luck, if you have any link, uh, luck with any of the, the Java plugins, then let me know. There is one, however, I'm using that is the language, uh, the language minus Java uh, plugin. The reason why I use that that is to get the colors in, in the editor. Okay, so so far so good. So then the next thing I did, I opened this project right here, and the only thing I had to begin with, close. Let us just close all the tabs right there. The only thing I had to begin with, but was this this file right here, the Atom demo application, 
der er Java file right here, and ja, um, yeah. så so der var personlig finger ikke til det her. So I, I wanted to create a new package. I created the space folder right there. Then I created my spaceship rest controller right here. And first of all, I forgot to I forgot to put in the package. So this means that the if you if you get to, to put in the package, then when you compile it, it will end up in default package, and then the Spring application will not find this, even though you have a nice uh, annotation with Spring address controller right there. Spring will not handle this file if it is in the default. Uh, Package. It needs to be in a package at the same level of your application uh, or, or wherever you have the Spring Boot application notation right here or further down in the hierarchy. So that was my first problem. I could not see why, why did my uh, spaceship, it was actually my spaceship press controller, why, why, why does it not work? This is uh, really annoying. Um, as, as, that, so that was my first problem. And then uh, after, after typing in the package, of course, this problem was gone. The next problem was my imports. I don't get any imports by default. So I actually have my Spring documentation right uh, here here i have my spring documentation this is right here spring framework docs current and then uh, then i could actually search for the annotation that i needed and uh, then i could see that ah this is the this is the package name for my git mapping for instance <clears throat> so that was that was uh, that, that was uh, the next thing so and as you can see right here i'm actually importing with star because it's just much easier for me because when i have to type this manually i want to save some time by using the star um so yeah so that's it so no there's no help actually at all when i uh, when i'm typing a java right here and, and i get all of these weird uh, errors from uh, the language plugin that's actually why i disabled it at some points okay this is actually the i did java package okay so let us just uh, let us actually dis disable that one let us disable that one of course i could also look at the issues but uh, yeah java ide where is it? Java ID is right there. Uninstall. ID Java. So, let us see if it, uh, yeah. So, um, so that, so, so far so good. Then next thing I wanted to do, because I'm not getting any comp compilation help at all by default. So I went, I took a, I took a terminal. So I went to a terminal and then I went to my project folder right here. Then you can write Gradle. And then you can say Java compile. Was it compile Java? Maybe it's, maybe it's compile Java actually. Then if you write minus T, it was compile Java. You could also write build actually. Then it will actually build. And then uh, every time it sees any changes on the um, on the file path, then it will actually uh, then it will actually run again. So uh, yeah. So then we have this compile Java minus T right here. That means that every time I change something, that means that if I change this uh, third. Uh, this, this uh, third destination we are going to, so something else instead of Jupiter, one, two, three, I could say the Eiffel Tower or something like that. Yes, and which package is this? The ID Java package. I have uninstalled it, so I probably just need to uh, restart it. And the good thing about Atom, it's, it's really easy to restart because it's so lightweight. You can stop and start it. Uh, yeah, as many times as you want. As you can see, it starts right up uh, right away. So that, that is a good thing about uh, about Atom. Um, yeah, so we change this to Eiffel Tower and we still get a lot of errors right here. Okay. That is some of the other, that is some of the other plugins that I have installed. But I, uh, actually, I split up my screen in two like this. Actually, I used another. I used another. Um, Actually, I use I use this, uh, two screens instead. Then I have my compilation result in one, and then I have my code in in, in the other one. Then the other thing I did was because I I, uh, I added the, the developer tool development tools, which are right here in my build Gradle file. I also need some kind of plugin for uh, for Gradle. I, I should have added that also so I could get some nice colors, but I don't have right now uh, because every time I need to do any changes, then I would actually just go to Spring Starter IO, and then I can actually go there. And uh, and change my installation, and then I can copy and paste the dependencies from there. But as you can see right here, I have this dev tools dependency, which is right there, and this uh, enables my application to restart every time there is a change in uh, every time the the files are, are compiled again, every time there are changes in the the compilation path. And as uh, right now here, we have boot run, which is started up right here. So that means that if I make any changes to any file, uh, Pluto, okay, Eiffel Tower, 
and little mermaids. I'm just writing something right now, as you can see. Save, then it should be compiled, and then Spring Boot will then restart the application. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Then I went, then I have this, uh, the third, the, then I have the third uh, terminal right here, and in here, then I can then curl my application, and you can see I've actually already done it. So let us say space slash um, third, like this, third. Enter, Eiffel Tower and a little mermaid. And if I change it to something else, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I need to save, I need to compile first a little. And there you will see that that changed. So I need to compile and it need to restart the application. And then I, so it is actually, it is not as bad as uh, expected of actually. And um, I don't have, yeah, my, uh, and my, my whole computer is not blocked by, um, Intel or another heavy uh, IDE, and of course, um, yeah, and of course, uh, Intel when it's done indexing and all that stuff, uh, there's also some stuff you can turn off. Actually, you can turn off some of the validation, so then you can make it work a bit faster. And I, this is not a slow computer; it's a very fast computer, but it was actually hung up anyway because. Um, yeah, until you know, had just so many checks and so many things that it was uh, indexing and checking. And it could be because I had a project that was a combination. It was actually, I have sub -mod modules uh, with, with view, with some view code. And and also, uh, I also had a, a, a Grails application and then I also had a Spring Boot, uh, just a normal Spring Boot application in the same uh, project. That could, of course, that also uh, Im impacted on the performance. So I will probably use IntelliJ again. I just want us to see how um, how difficult it actually was to use Atom instead uh, of um, of IntelliJ. Let us create a new REST controller together just for fun. So I will create a new folder right here. That could then be um, mining. So let's say we want to mine an asteroid mining. Then I create a new uh, file right here. It's not a class, it's a file I'm creating. So mining, mining, press controller, like this, dot Java, remember the extension also. Then we need the package, or else it will, and the, the good thing about Atom actually, if you've written something one, once somewhere, then it actually remembers that uh, that I actually wrote package somewhere. And that, that is uh, one of the things I really like about pack, uh, Atom, then that's also one of the things that makes it really strong. It does not matter which scripting language you are, or which programming language you are. You, you are writing it after you have uh, after you have written some some files, then uh, it, it will remember what you typed. So yes, so we have here package. Then we have com dot example dot add some demo dot space dot mining, and that's actually that's a package, right? And then we have the class public class um, and mining rest controller. Like this, I'm going to annotate it with REST controller. I'm going to annotate this with uh, request mapping. Request mapping, and as you can see right now, I do not get any, any imports. Um, imports, and now I'm lazy, so I'll just copy paste it from here from one of my other classes right here. The good thing actually about uh, writing all of this by hand is actually that you really appreciate the help uh, that you get, especially when uh, writing Java code. And really uh, appreciate all the help, also all the navigation if you want to navigate. Um, but actually, you can still look for files and go to files pretty easily with the SM also. So the navigation part is not that, um, yeah, it has not annoyed me yet anyway. So, but uh, let us just look at the. Uh, Let's go to the compilation uh, tab in my um, in my terminal right here, and let, let, let us just continue to see if I make any errors right here. Then we have first of all request mapping. Let us give it something with the mining like this, and then we, this is, that means that means that the path for all of these rest endpoints will be mining to begin with. And then we say get mapping like this, and then we can say that this is uh, asteroid, and we create a public string mine asteroid. Like this, return uh, mining and asteroid. It's also good then that you can actually um, you get a better feeling of the code actually, and, and you actually start to remember uh, path variable. You, 
it's easier to remember the code also afterwards because you have to remember it. If you forgot something, then you have to look it up in the annoying uh, class list from uh, in, in the Java doc, of course, uh, which is uh, yeah, which was located right here. So let us say that I could not remember that it was named the path variable, and I had to load up like path variable. So the I'm actually using documentation much more when I'm using uh, Atom like this. And it's, yeah, it kind of, uh, I also feel, um, I feel a bit cooler also uh, when, I, when I write like this. So I feel, um, yeah, I feel like it, it's actually me programming. It's not uh, IntelliJ that uh, just creates a whole application for me. Uh, I have to write this uh, myself. And uh, I really appreciate the Spring documentation also. Um, so that, yeah, there are only good things about to say about this uh, asteroid. And I'm saying a name of yeah, asteroid. Uh, yeah, type of asteroid. This is the this is completely type of asteroid. Spring, type of asteroid, mining an asteroid, and with type plus and then type right here. Yeah, I need to see if, if, if it compiles okay now. Yeah, it does, does, does. You can also see if I make some kind of error right here, then you can see that it complains, then my compilation window gets read. Ah, it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. Okay, so now uh, let us test our application now. Go to the third one, curl. Yeah, curl local hosts, and then we say mining. And then asteroid, right. okay, it's like there was a, I think it asteroid, right. well, that's E missing right there. Then the type that could be it could be a gold and silver one, right? That could be the asteroid. Or it could also just be something like helium. We actually need helium. It's not that much helium on Earth actually, so it could also just be helium. And it says mining an asteroid with type helium. And of course, if we change something, mining um, also say mining two asteroids. Then it says two asteroids because with this setup, we just, uh, yeah, it is pretty cool. If you are creating, um, yeah, no matter what you're, doesn't matter what you're creating, uh, you consider using the develop the developer tools in the spring. If you're, if you're playing, if you're doing something with spring, then you need this. Of course, if you're, if you're playing around with a web application, then you would, of course, install something like a, a live update server or something like that. Actually, Atom also has a plugin for a live update server. If you, it's called something with live server. Um, maybe I can find it, or maybe we will just save that for another video. Let us just see. Live server, something like this. Add some like yes, this one. This server has also been has been downloaded one one million something time. It is really good to have. So if you have a HTML file, and then you can then you can open up your browser, and then um, if you make any changes to the HTML content, then um, then your browser page will actually reload automatically by itself. Of course, if you're using Node, um, then if, you, if you're using a Node server, maybe you have a Vue application or React application on Angular application, then of course, uh, this will also happen automatically if you have your development server uh, running. That is actually just what I want to show you. Um, thank you very much for watching. Have a great evening and try out Atom if you haven't tried it already. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.